Hey y'all, it's Coach Unify here. Wanted to talk um, a little bit about Hermes. It's been a while since we did any Hermes classes. Although this is Hermes Academy, we've been dabbling a lot into the Third Testament, going back into the Old Testament, New Testament, Enoch, and all kinds of stuff. Well, I was out in the hunting blind yesterday. A lot of you don't know I do a lot of hunting. I call myself the Hillbilly Hunter. I've thought about doing some some uh, shows on that, but I was afraid a lot of people would unsubscribe if I put up a show dealing with hunting. So, <clears throat> let's talk about Hermes, and we're up here in Similitude 5. Now, my wife has done a lot in Similitudes, and I've done some stuff in Commands. You can see those classes, um, on, if you do a search for Similitude or uh, Commands, you can see some, some stuff we've been doing with, with Hermes. Like I said, it's been a while, so it may be a little bit disjointed as we come all the way up here to similar to I said five but it looks like it's similar to six is called of two sorts of voluptuous men and of their death and defection and of the continuance of their pains now I may should have read this thing beforehand but you know we don't really do that we listen to it a few times I read this book you know several times in the past but <clears throat> we just gonna jump right into it before we do um, I do want to say you know if you if you ever wonder why bad things happen to good people or if you wonder you know why you're going through some of the things you're going through you need to stick around this 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 class is is, is serious class if you are um friend of the 144 or you know or a 144 wannabe you better pay attention <laughs> if you if you plan on turning to the lord and and, and you you um want to get closer to the father you better pay attention if you, you know, recently, you know, called on the name of, of the Lord and you're wondering why certain things are happening in your life, we got all of those answers now, right here in Simma 2 6, right? Simma 2 6. All right, so we're going to jump right into it. <clears throat> Verse 1 As I was sitting at home and praising God for all the things which I had seen and was thinking concerning the commands that they were exceedingly good and great and honest and pleasant. And such as were able to bring a man to salvation, I said thus within myself, I shall be happy if I walk according to these commands, and whosoever shall walk in them shall live unto God. Okay, now, we're going to break this down a little bit, as we usually do here in Hermes Academy. When the person that's talking here is Hermes. Now, Hermes, um, what we know about Hermes, you can find his name written there in the New Testament. Um, I forgot what verse it is, but he's mentioned there, um, and he kind of walked with those with those guys way back then, and he he wrote this book here, and this is a very sophisticated book as far as you know our understanding. It's kind of like Revelations, where there's a lot of you know there's a lot going on in these short little verses here. But like I said, you could jump back and you can look at commands. The commands are um, there's a there's the, the book the Shepherd of Hermes is broken up into three parts. The first part is visions, where Hermes is you know given a vision, like I say, similar to similar to what uh, John did there in the Book of Revelations. But then the second part is the commands or mandates, where he lays down rules that we should follow. Now these aren't you know contradictory to the commands there back in the Book of Exodus. These is like additional commands. This is like stuff that you know we're supposed to be doing, you know, here and now. And it's dealing a lot with, you know, with you know how we live, how we treat one another, and that kind of thing. And then he talks about living unto God. He said, if you follow those commands, you should live unto God. Now I did look that up um, in one of the classes I did say I couldn't remember what that was. What he says as far as live unto God, he he says that all creatures uh, fear the Father. All creatures fear God but not all keep his commands and the way you live unto God is you have to keep his commandments keep his laws keep the statutes and such all right so let's go on verse 2 whilst I was speaking on this wise within myself I saw him who I had been wont to see sitting by me and he spake thus unto me now he's talking about the shepherd now the book is called the shepherd of Hermes she Hermes himself is not a shepherd there are sh uh, there is a shepherd in the book that kind of guides Hermes along there's a couple of more shepherds that we're going to hear about in this section here but the shepherd that he's talking about is the angel of repentance the angel of repentance you can look that up in your angel your encyclopedia there but the angel of repentance is who he's talking about verse 3 what doubtest thou concerning my commandments which I have delivered unto thee they are good Doubt not, 
but trust in the Lord and thou shalt walk in them for I will give thee strength to fulfill them and this is coming from the angel of repentance saying you know I've given you these, these commands they are good they, they're something you should follow and don't don't be scared you know because I'm going to help you with them if you try to if you try to do these commands I'm going to help you with them and you do need a little bit of help because you know there's a lot of things coming against you especially those who try to get close to the father you're going to find out that these principalities and powers are real and you're going to need a little bit of help but he promises us that he'll help us with those look at verse 4 these commands are profitable to those who shall repent of their sins which they have formerly committed if for the time to come they shall not continue in them all right talking about the sins now and, and repentance of the sins now <clears throat> this is you know like I said you if you want to know why good things why bad things happen to good people well I can give my personal testimony I'm not gonna say this goes for everybody but when I started to turn to the father this is one of the first books that he put in my hand was the Shepherd of Hermes I read it you know 20 some years ago and and so I knew about the book but once again back in 2014 during the um, the sabbatical year of 2015 uh, the Jubilee year too it, it I found myself reading this book and getting back into these you know principles that is taught here in, in the Shepherd of Hermas. Verse 5. Whosoever therefore ye be that repent, cast away from you the naughtiness of the present world, and put on all virtue and righteousness. And so shall ye be able to keep the commands and not sin from henceforth any more. Yeah, that that's why, you know, at the end of our show we say we teach virtues and, and, and Hermas Academy because that's what this book is about. It's about virtues. All right, let's look at verse 6. We're going to try to get through this quickly. We're on low power. We're having power issues. But For if ye shall keep yourselves from sin for the time to come, ye shall cut off a great deal of your former sins. Walk in my commands, and ye shall live unto God. These things have I spoken unto you. Now, we are very sinful, guys. Don't be fooled. You know, back there in the book of Romans, um, we find out that everybody is a sinner. Yeah, we are. The main reason why we're sinning now is because we're not being taught anything. Nobody's trying to teach us these virtues. Nobody's trying to teach us, you know, how we're supposed to live. So we're all off track. But what we find out is that, you know, by picking up the, the shepherd of Hermas, by understanding these rules that were taught back there in, in, in the commands and some of the similitudes, if, if we do this, you know, and stop, you know, stop being, you know, stop having, uh, stop being angry or stop being, um, uh, what are some of the other ones? Um, stop being, um, oh, I was one that I struggle with and I can't dig it. Uh, shit, grief. Stop letting grief take hold of us. Then, you know, we will, we, by simply stop doing those things, we, we, they, they'll go away. It, it, that's one of the best things, you know, uh, about this, this spiritual walk is you don't really have to go back and make up for a whole lot of stuff. I mean, one part, the, the section on lying, he told Hermes, just stop lying. He didn't tell him, go back and, you know, you know, undo the lies tell the people the truth or whatever he just says stop lying and so what this is saying if you if you will cut off if you will stop doing the sins that you've been doing you'll you'll a lot of the sins that you have committed will will go away just stop verse 7 and when and when he has said this he added let us go into the field and i will show thee the shepherds of sheep I replied, sir, let us go. All right, now, we're about to get into it. He's about to take us into the field, and he's about to show us the sheep. He's about to show us us. You've heard people call us sheeple and all of this instead of people and all of this. But we're, the, the, he's, he's going to give an, an, a parable kind of thing where he's going he's gonna to show us uh, ourselves in the form of sheep with these shepherds over us. And so we're about to get started right now in, into this thing heavily. So let's pay a close attention, guys, because it's, it's, uh, it's some really deep stuff he's about to talk about here. Verse 8. And we came into the certain field, and there he showed me a young shepherd, finely arrayed with his garments of purple color. And he fed large flocks, and his sheep were full of pleasure and in much delight and cheerfulness. And they skipping ran here and there. All right. So it sounds good, right? So he got a young shepherd. Notice that it's a young shepherd and he's finally dressed in purple. You know, and he's he's he, everybody's happy in this in this uh, in this in this shepherd's camp under this shepherd's flock. Everybody's running around skipping and and not everybody's skipping. But, you know, everybody's happy and they, they're they're full of pleasure and, and all of this is stuff. They're well fed. You know, this this flock is a large flock. Notice that it's a large flock. All, right, all of this stuff is going to be important. 
Verse 9. And the shepherd took very great satisfaction in his flock, and the countenance of that shepherd was cheerful, running up and down among his flock. Now, I ain't going to hold you in suspense. He's talking about Satan. This, sa this shepherd here is Satan. You know, he, and, and his flock are the people that have gone astray. But we're going to find out here. Notice that he's taking pleasure in his flock. Notice, like I said, it's a large flock. He's talking about the majority of people are under the 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 um, uh, shepherdhood. I don't know. Hey, the, under, uh, a lot of people are fall under this flock here. But let's go on. Verse 10. Then the angel said unto me, seest then this shepherd? I answered, sir, I see him. He said unto me, this is the messenger of delight and pleasure. He therefore corrupts the minds of the servants of God and turns them from the truth, delighting them in many pleasures, and they perish. All right. So now I just now I just did a class a little while ago uh, dealing with the covenant uh, and the blessings, the cursings, and the restoration of the current the covenant. You can see there on, on if you you know look. On, on YouTube, I know you're not. So let me tell you what what I was alluding to, and that is how this happened to me. You know, back in you know 1999, I found myself on a path, you know, of reading the scripture, you know, trying to to um you know get in touch with who the Father was through His Word or whatever. But I slipped up. You know, I slipped up, and I found myself with this with I found myself in this position here, where you know. What is it? The messenger of delight and pleasure. I found myself in delight and pleasure, and it did just it. It corrupted my mind. It turned me from the truth, and you know, and had me with many pleasures. You know, and like I said, if you if you look at that, if you look at that that class, it's toward the end of the class that I actually give the testimony, and you can you can hear how this actually played out in my life. But for the sake of time, I'm gonna run on. Verse 11 says. For they forget the commands of the living God and live in luxury and in vain pleasures and are corrupted by the evil angel, some of them even unto death and others to a falling away. Now, me, myself, it was only to a falling away, you know, because at some point I, you know, regained my zeal for the Lord. I picked up the scripture and I started reading again. But others, you know, they never get back. They stay that way until they, you know, finally, you know, perish or whatever. And, you know, that would be bad news for them because they, they never, they never go through this repentance part here. They never, they never repent of it. And so then they have to come back and pay, you know, kind of have to come back and, you know, kind of do it all, all again. Um, let's look at 12. I replied, I understand not what you mean by saying unto death and to a falling away. Here says he. All those sheep which thou sawest exceeding joyful are such as have forever departed from God and given themselves up to the lust of this present time. Which meaning that they're not really keeping the commandments anymore. They're not really, you know, waiting for the promises anymore. They've gone back into the world and started doing worldly things. And this is what this is what you have, especially in my case back there from 1999 to 2013. I was doing just this. I was out there, you know, partaking in the in the worldly things, and I had forgotten about the scriptures. It's because I was under the this shepherd here that the that you know I was living this life of pleasure and deceit, and not really thinking about where I should have been. Let's go on and find out what happens. Verse thirteen. To so these, therefore, there is no return by repentance unto life, because there are other sins they have added to this. And they have blasphemed the name of the Lord. These kind of men are ordained unto death. Now, I might have spoke a little bit too soon because, you know, praise the Lord, I didn't go this far. This, then he's talking about two different kinds of people in here. Now, notice the split. You have a lot of people that are under this evil shepherd, the shepherd of delight and the shepherd of pleasure. A lot of people going like, why is delight and pleasure evil? <laughs> well, <clears throat> Just pay attention. But you have these two different types. One type is actually blaspheming the name of the Lord. Now, these type, they don't recover. These are the ones that's going to stay there unto death. You remember the, the, the scriptures, uh, the New Testament tells you that, you know, you won't be forgiven. He who blasphemes the Holy Spirit, you know. So you have people that are living in pleasure that are doing just this. They are, they are blaspheming the Lord. And he says, these kind of men are ordained unto death, meaning that they, they ain't got no hope. They ain't, they ain't, they ain't going to make it. You know, verse 14 said, I mean, where they're not going to repent, they're not going to change heart. Verse 14 says, but those sheep which thou saw of not leaping, but feeding in one place are such as have indeed given themselves up to pleasure and delights, but have not spoken anything wickedly against the Lord. Now, this is the majority of us here. 
the ones who are actually listening to this to this to this um to this video we are the ones who who are have not you know gone this far and started you know saying anything wickedly against the lord how do you know because you clicked on a video i promise you those who are blaspheming the lord they don't want nothing to do with, with hermits or, or the scripture or anything that they're not listening they're over there still, you know, enjoying the 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 delights and the um the pleasures of the wicked shepherd there. But those of us who, you know, find ourselves over here trying to get knowledge, trying to get back, trying to, you know, restore the path to dwell in, we, you know, we are the ones who at one point found ourselves in pleasure and delight, but we wasn't leaping. We wasn't jumping around cheerful like the other guys. We wasn't blaspheming and carrying on. And and you know, that's important. Verse 15. These, therefore, are only falling away from the truth, and so have yet hope laid up for them in repentance. For such a falling off has some hope still left of a renewal, but they that are dead are utterly gone forever. He's talking about the ones who haven't haven't done this. We still have a chance. If even though you may be now still partaking in some of this evil stuff, you know, and like pagan holidays, uh, you may not be, you know, paying attention to the Sabbath day. You may not be keeping the commandments or you know that kind of thing. But as long as you aren't blaspheming the Lord, you still have a hope for repentance, and that's what he's talking about here. You got these two different types of people, you know, in this group of with this wicked shepherd. But you know, if you if you're not blaspheming from the Lord you still have a hope for repentance you still can get back verse 16 again we went a little farther forward and he showed me a great shepherd who had as it were a rustic figure clad with white goat skin having his bag upon his shoulder and in his hand a stick full of knots and a very hard and very hard and a whip in his other hand and his countenance was stern and sour, enough to a fright a man. Such was his look. All right, now here comes the other shepherd here. This shepherd, he's a big shepherd. It, the, while the other shepherd was a, a young shepherd, this is a this is a great shepherd. And while the other shepherd was dressed in, you know, finely dressed in purple, this one has, you know, white goat skin on him. He's a, he's a rustic figure. While the other one was taking pleasure in his flock, this one got a big old knotty whip here. You know, a stick full of knots, very hard. And a whip in his other hand. This guy comes for business. He got it. Look, his his countenance is stern and sour to to scare people. I mean, this this dude this dude ain't playing. You know, this is the other shepherd here. And watch what he does. He took from the young shepherd such sheep as lived in pleasures, but did not skip up and down, and drove them into a, a and drove them into a certain steep, craggy place. It says fall of thorns. It should be full of thorns. I will go over there and check my hard copy to to see what it says. I know it's gonna say full of thorns. This is this document here I found on the web. You know me. I'm always finding free copies on the web, and you can find this one over here. I think I have a um a link to it. But if you put in shepherd uh the shepherd of Hermes, the William Wake translation, and look for a PDF, you can find this copy on there. And you know it does have a little you know little word errors, but we can deal with that. I would change it, but you know we're gonna keep on going. What I did was I took it and brought, put it on my, um, put it on my uh, computer here so that you know it's easier to see and I can work with it. But we're gonna go on. It says, uh, okay, so this guy he's receiving, you know, some of the sheep from the other shepherd, from the young shepherd. Some of the ones, well, the ones that aren't blaspheming, the ones that aren't skipping and running up and down. These are the, those are the ones that are blaspheming. No, he doesn't want those. He wants the other ones, the ones that are kind of sitting quietly and kind of minding their own self business, not blaspheming the Lord or saying anything wickedly against the Father. He's getting those people, and look, he's driving them into this certain steep, craggy place. This place is this place full of thorns and briars. And so much that they could not get themselves free from them. Then we find out in other places when it talks about thorns and briars, he's talking about um, um, uh, financial things. He's talking about, you know, um, I don't have the verses here and I wish I did. But he's, yeah, he's talking about financial hardships. He goes and he gets these people who have been taking pleasures and, you know, and, and, and all of this other stuff. And he brings them and he runs them through financial hardships, he's saying here. And. Uh, briars and thorns, though these these are these are you know this financial hardships is what it boils down to. Verse eighteen, but being entangled in them, fed upon thorns and briars, 
and were grievously tormented with his whipping for he still drove them on and afforded them not any place or time to stand still this guy ain't playing he's he he's like running them through these these thorns getting them all tangled up in there they, they can't eat anything but the thorns and stuff because they can't free themselves and they, they doesn't have any room to get free he doesn't let them free this guy is serious you know he's 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 the um the the um i forgot which shepherd he is or which you know which angel he is i think he mentions him there but this is the one that that kind of helps us get back you know we we'll say well oh, no, well you know you, all of us are going to going to have to go through this we could either go through it you know on our own you know or you can wait to the tribulation and go through it with everybody else and i promise you you want to go through it on your own because it you know i, I for my personal experience you still have a little bit of help you know you, you you still have you know hope you know you know when you when you find yourself you know without you just give one example you can go to the neighbor and borrow sugar or go get water when you're in all of these financial hardships and things are going on but when everybody goes through it no everybody's going to be killing talking about the tribulation everybody's going to be killing each other and they're not going to be trying to help each other and all of that you'd rather go through it on your own than wait for everybody else you don't want to wait for the big bus on this one all right look at 19 when therefore i saw them so cruelly whipped and afflicted i was grieved for them because they were greatly tormented nor had they any rest afforded them. This is Hermes. And Hermes is like, why are these sheep going through this? Why why are these sheep being treated so bad? All right? And, all right? and you know, Hermes is looking at him and he's like, wow, this is pretty rough on these sheep. Look at 20. And I said unto the shepherd that was with me, sir, who is this cruel and unplacable shepherd who is moved with no compassion toward these sheep? He answered, this shepherd is indeed one of the holy angels, but is appointed for the punishment of sinners. See, this is the angel of punishment. Again, you can go to your angel encyclopedia there and look him up. This is the angel of punishment, right? So he's the one that's going to correct these sheep, put them through the necessary punishments that they're going to have that they're going to have to go through in order to get back. And this is why a lot of people, you know, you know, they they, they let me slow down a little bit and give a give a, a little, you know. I don't know if you call it a example or analogy or whatever, but a lot of times people call on the name of the Lord. They say, you know what, I'm going to change my life and I want to get back to the Father. And they go, you know, say a prayer or whatever. And they call on the name of the Lord. Well, when the Lord hears them, guess what happens? Bad stuff start happening. They were expecting everything to, you know, the skies to open up and the angels to start singing and all of these, you know, doves to come down and land on them and everything to be great. And that ain't what happens. You know, a lot of people lose their jobs. A lot of people lose family members. They end up getting sick or going through, you know, different stuff and they don't understand. And so they start to think something is wrong. And what do they do? The first thing they do is run back to the world they was in. You know, they lost their job. Now they go back and get all of it. No, you, well, you ask for the Lord to come into your life. And that's why we're doing this class, you know, so that you don't do that. So that you understand, no, this is the, really the way it's supposed to work. Um, you know, it may be it may be painful and it's going to be painful. It is painful for those that are going through A lot of you going through it already, you know, and you know that it is painful. And so now uh, understanding what Herman says, you understand that it's supposed to be like that you know and then that kind of you know softens the blow a little bit because we have to take it with joy we have, have to take it with, with love we have to not complain so much and you know be so bitter about it because that just makes it worse we sterilize our we sterilize what we're going through when we do such things so that, and that's why we're doing this class well let's go on 21 to him therefore are delivered those who have erred from God and serve the lust and pleasures of this world for this cause he punishes them every one according to their deserts with cruel and various kinds of pains yeah so we find ourselves out there in the world taking part in all of this worldly stuff like i said i was down there with them with them people down there at tva and I was doing the same thing that they were doing. They didn't know about the Father. They didn't care about the Scripture. They didn't know about feasts and all of it. But I was right there with them, doing Christmas, doing you know Halloween and Easter. You know, even a Sabbath day wasn't a part of my life. I was down there with them. But you know, when I had erred from God, I, I had erred from God. But this here, this angel of punishment, is the one. You know, once I decided to come back to the Father, I had to go talk to the angel of punishment for a little while. And I'm still there. I'm still talking to the angel of pun the angel of punishment. 
you know and but it's just a period of time that you have to go through it you know and then you know you can start to you know get back to where you're supposed to be all right and it says for this cause the he punishes them everyone according to their deserts so you get what you deserve after that after you know there's a lot of people out here living you know in these in these pleasurable times right now and you know they're stacking up they're stacking up you know their penalties they're, they're going to be punished for this stuff but let's go on 22 sir said i i would know what kind of pains they are which everyone undergoes harkin said me the the several pains and torments are those which men every day undergo in their present lives for some suffer losses others poverty others diverse sicknesses some are unsettled others suffer injuries from those that are unworthy others fall under many other trials and inconveniences this is some of the stuff you're going through so look so examine your life and see aren't you going through some of this stuff right it doesn't say all of them come on it although it feels like to me i got all of them on me you know but he says something you got pains you know in in your and this is probably in your in, in not only in your body but also you know people messing with you making you feel real bad and you know hurting you or whatever torments you know from those which every day you know it, let's see uh, some suffer losses, right? Like I said, people lose their job, they lose their homes, they lose their cars. Is that others suffer poverty? I Meaning, you know, they start going through, you know, those financial troubles we was talking about earlier, where they can't make ends meet anymore. Others get sick. You know, some people get sick after this. And then it says some are unsettled and suffer injuries from those that are unworthy. Yeah. How about you got people who, who who have no intention on getting any doing anything with the father or, you know, getting closer to him or reading his word of calling you all kinds of names, calling you devilish names and, 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 and picking on you and stuff like that. This is the kind of stuff you have to deal with. So if you're going through this, if you have, you know, if you're being persecuted, this is why. It's because you are under the angel of punishment right now. And he, he you know, and he ain't going to let you go. You know what I'm saying? You got to endure the punishment. You endured the pleasure. You enjoyed the pleasure. You know, hey, we had a ball out there. I ain't going to lie. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 I ain't going to say it was fun because, you know, I, I don't want nothing to do with it now. I wish this were some way I could accelerate this, you know, this, this punishment period that I'm in. You know what I'm saying? And, and hurry up and get it over with. But let's go on. He says in, you know, verse 23, for many with an unsettled design at many things. Uh, see, I told you he was having power issues, but let's go. On. For many with an unsettled design at many things, and it profited them not. And they say that they have not success in their undertakings, meaning things don't work. I, know, I think I messed that verse up, but things don't work. It, it was a period of time where, like a year, where, you know, everything I turned, turned to, everything I touched turned to crap. You ever heard of a, of the Midas touch? I had the opposite. I couldn't do anything right. And it, why? It was because of this angel of punishment that I was under here. You know, nothing worked right. And, you know, we, we all go through this, you know, 24, they do not call to mind what they have done amiss and they complain to the Lord when therefore they shall have undergone all kinds of vexation and inconvenience. Then they are delivered over to me for good instruction. Let me read that again. All right. So at first, while they're going through all of these these uh, vexations and can't do anything right, they don't remember why they can't remember that it was because, you know, they had done a miss. And I can speak for myself. I didn't know why I went out when things weren't were going bad with a tree fell on my truck busted the windows out of out of the truck out of the car there and and uh, uh now the tree fell on the car busted the windows out of the car and the squirrels or the rats ate the uh ignition system in the truck i just chewed up the wires and all of that and i couldn't remember why or didn't know what was going on so did i did i remember no but he says after these vexations and inconveniences do you remember that yeah it was because i had done wrong and then you start to you know get back into the lord and he says are and are confirmed in the faith of the lord and serve the lord all the rest of the days with a pure mind now does it stop it don't stop immediately guys it does not all right let's look at 25 and when they begin to repent of their sins, then they call to mind their works which they had done amiss and give honor to God, saying that he is a just judge and they have deserved 
they and they have deservedly suffered all things according to their deeds yeah this is what happens this is exactly what happened to me guys i i once I had been punished for a while, and uh, I think it took Hermes to realize what was going on here. I was realizing that I was being punished for my deeds, for what I had done back there, you know, in those, you know, years that I had lived in pleasure and deceit. And then, you know, I started to remember that. And yeah, he is a just judge, you know, and but you have to realize that. 26. Then for what remains of their lives, they serve God with a pure mind and have success in all their undertakings and receive from the Lord what's whatever they desire. Yeah. So after you get through with the angel of punishment, now you start to receive what you desire. Remember that we are going to go through a purging period. Like it says, you know, they suffer losses and all of that stuff. But the father doesn't have any problem with our stuff or our houses or our cars and such. You know, he doesn't have any problem. He has a problem with us living in pleasure and deceit. So once we go through the punishment period, we start to get those things back. It says what it says right there and receive from the Lord whatsoever they desire. You just have to get through that punishment period first. 27 and then they give thanks unto the Lord that they were delivered unto me nor do they suffer any more cruelty all right so you get you get you get um delivered unto the angel of repentance now he said unto me remember this is the angel of repentance that's talking here the angel of punishment was the one that you know had the naughty whip or whatever but after you go through the angel of punishment then you get to the angel of repentance this is where you start to remember that yeah i've done wrong yeah you know i deserved all of this stuff but look at 28 and i said unto him sir i entreat you still to show me one show me now one thing what said he does i ask i said unto him are they who depart from the fear of god tormented for the same time that they enjoy their false delight and pleasures he answered me they are tormented for the same time. Now, this is Hermes. And, you know, he's asking his question. You know, watch, watch what Hermes does. He's saying, you know, if you, was, if you was, you know, in deceit for, you know, seven years, are you supposed to be punished for seven years? The uh, angel of repentance said, yeah, they are. But look here, 29. And I said unto him, they are then tormented but little. Whereas they who enjoy their pleasures so as to forget God ought to endure seven times as much punishment. Now, Hermes need to hush. You know, he's saying that you, 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 you take part in this stuff for a year, but you're supposed to be punished seven years for it. He needs to hush. And he's going to find out in a minute when the angels start wrapping that naughty whip around his legs that it don't feel so good. But let's go on. He answered me, thou art foolish, neither understandest thou the efficacy of this punishment. I said unto him, sir, if I understood it, I would not desire you to tell me. And so this is this is Hermes here. He's asking these questions. I don't know if he's trying to get brownie points with the father speaking up. Like, oh, they need to be punished even more for what they've been doing. But like I said, he need to hush. <laughs> 31. Harkin said he and learn what the force of both is, both of the pleasure and of the punishment. An hour of pleasure is terminated within its own space, but one hour of punishment has the efficacy of 30 days. A, a uh -oh. whosoever therefore enjoys his false pleasure for one day and is one day tormented, that one day of punishment is equivalent to a whole year. A whole year's space. All right, now check the book. And this, this word here was added. So I'm going to go ahead and delete it because it's, it's different from what the book says. It doesn't make sense anyway. But look what he's saying here. He's saying that an hour of, of punish, an hour of pleasure only lasts for an hour. But an hour of punishment lasts for 30 days. You know what I'm saying? That, that kind of reminds you of when you used to get a whooping. You know, you was doing that thing that you shouldn't have been doing, and then you got a spanking. Well, you remember that spanking a whole lot longer than you remember that little thing that you shouldn't have been doing in the first place. And, all right, let's go on. Look at 32. Thus look how many days anyone pursues his pleasures. So many years is he punished for it. You see, therefore, how that the time of worldly enjoyments is but short, but that of pain and torments a great deal more. All right. So what he's saying is you, he don't have to punish you more. If you if you if you ha are living deceit for one day, that one day of punishment that you're going to receive for it 
It's going to last for a lifetime. You ain't going to forget it, guys. Remember up there early, he said, once you realize that you that why you're being punished, you, you live with the father from then on. You don't go back. You don't go back and start making those same mistakes. You know, praise the Lord, we don't. Ooh. I know I don't want to, but let's go on. 33. I replied, sir, for as much as I do not understand at all these times of pleasure and pain, I entreat you that you would explain yourself more clearly concerning them. He answered me saying, thou foolish, thy foolishness still sticks unto thee. Yeah, the, 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 angels, the angels don't talk real good to these guys. They don't, you know. They, they, they're not really they're not really nice. I guess it's not their responsibility to be all nice and stuff. So they, he tell them, you know, you foolish Hermes. Why are you asking such questions? But he's going to go on to explain it to him. Look at 34. Shouldest thou not rather purify thy mind and serve God? Take heed lest when the time is fulfilled, thou be found unwise. Hear then as thou desire that thou mayest the more easily understand. So he's going to explain it to him. Because he say, after it's over with, you want to you want to be clear. And that's why we're doing this class is, guys, you don't you don't want to come out of your punishment period. Because after the punishment period, what happens? You start to get the things that you desire. You start to get good things again. Thing, good things start to happen to you again. And if you don't understand the punishment period, guess what? You can end up back there doing wrong stuff. Mm -mm. Hermes Academy. We're trying to prevent that kind of stuff. Look at 36. I mean 35. He that gives himself up one day to his place pleasures and delights and does whatsoever his soul desires is full of great folly and understands what he does but the day following forgets what he did the day before all right so talking about the pleasures and 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 stuff so you 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 found yourself you know, hopefully this is in the past for a lot of us this is in the present for some of us but we find ourselves living in pleasure and delight but look what he said you don't even remember what it is you, you go through all this pleasurable stuff you don't you don't, the next day you, you it's like it's gone you don't even remember all that you all that you know you you are partaking in 36 for delight and worldly pleasure are not kept in memory by reason of the folly that is rooted in them but when pain and torment befall a man a day, he is in effect troubled the whole year after because his punishment continues in his memory. Yeah, you remember the whooping. You might not remember the cookie you stole. It might, it, or you might not remember what it tastes like, but you remember that slap you got on your hand. You remember that for a long time is what he's talking about. Look at 37. Wherefore, he remembers it with sorrow the whole year, and then calls to mind his pain, pleasure, and delight. He perceives that for the sake of that he was punished. Yeah, you start to realize why you were getting punished, right? 38. Whosoever, therefore, have delivered themselves over to such pleasures are thus punished because that when they had life, they rendered themselves liable unto death. For many, you had life at one point. You were living unto God. You were following his commandments. I know I was. I was reading the scripture and, you know, trying to do everything I at least understood. But then when, you know, the money started rolling in and I started getting all, you know, all of the the uh, benefits of, you know, having, you know, you know, you know, big paychecks or whatever. I forgot it. You know, I start going Christmas shopping and, you know, start doing all other stuff and forgot about his commandments and forgot about his rules. But after the punishment period comes, then, you know, you realize that you were in error and you can start living like you're supposed to be living. Look at 39. I said unto him, sir, what pleasures are hurtful? He answered, that is pleasure to every man which he does willingly. Meaning if you enjoy it, if you enjoy it, it's pleasure. You know, if, it, if, it's, if it's luxurious to you, if, if, if you want to do it, then it's, then it's pleasure. Not all of it's bad. Not everything that you enjoy is bad. He doesn't say that. He just defines the word pleasure here. And he said those things that you do willingly are pleasurable. Look at 40. For the angry man gratifying his passion perceives pleasure in it. And so the adulterer and the drunkard, the slanderer and liar, the covetous man and the defrauder, and whosoever commits anything like unto these, he followeth the evil disposition because he receives a satisfaction in the doing of it. Yeah, 
You take pleasure in your anger. You see somebody who likes who 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 is angry and fussing at somebody and carrying on. They they're enjoying that. They they're taking pleasure in it, letting you have it. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I told them off. They enjoy that kind of stuff as well as you know the drunken and the uh, the, the slanderer. The person enjoys lying. They enjoy. That's why they're doing it, and it is a pleasurable act. Now these are some of the the. Um, the uh, bad pleasurable stuff. There are good pleasures. These are some of the some of the bad ones. Look at 41. All these pleasures and delights are hurtful to the servants of God. For these, therefore, they are tormented and suffer punishments. All right. So once you realize that you know you're not supposed to be you know uh, doing this stuff, you're not supposed to be you know be angry. You're not supposed to be slanderous, and you're not supposed to be lying. Remember Hermes Academy and the twelve you know virtues or whatever. Uh, this one, a lot of these you know have to do with adultery. A lot of the you know the commands talk about adultery and stuff. And once you get away from these, you're going to be punished for them. Forty-two. There are also pleasures that bring. There are also pleasures that bring salvation unto men. For many, when they do what is good, find pleasure in it and are attracted by the delights in it. Now, these are the pleasures that you that you that are good for you. Some things are good for you, you know, um, doing charitable deeds or, you know, helping people. You know, some people take pleasure in cooking meals for people or, you know, they, you could take pleasure in good things, too. Forty three. Now, this pleasure is profitable to the service of God and bring life to such men. But those hurtful pleasures, which were before mentioned, bring torments and punishments, right? So we have to watch what pleasures, what the, and it, remember the pleasures are the things we do willingly is what he defined it as earlier. So we want to do those things willingly, we don't do only those things that, that are good for us, even though, you know, we don't want to do those things that are hurtful. 44, and whosoever shall continue in them and shall not repent of what they have done shall bring death unto themselves. All right. So if you don't repent, if you never repent, you're going to end up, you know, right, we're going to go on. Guys. I know this class is getting long, but this is really important stuff. So you got to stick around, you know what I'm saying? Put it in your watch later list or whatever. You can't finish it now or whatever. But, you know, we're we going to go on here because these two sections are really totally, really closely uh, tied together. And I think we need the information in, in similar to seven in order to complete the story. So let's see. It's called they that they who repent must bring forth fruits worthy of repentance. Again, we're coming out of the Shepherd of Hermes. This is the William Wake translation. There is a, a good translation on that that you can listen to on YouTube. Um, it's not it's not this particular translation, but it does sound good. Got it dramatized and all of that. But let's go on. After a few days, I saw the same person that before talked with me in the same field in which I had seen those shepherds. And he said unto me, What seekest thou? I said, Sir, said I, I come to entreat you that you will command the shepherd, who is the minister of punishment, to depart out of my house because he greatly affix, afflicts me. I told you, Herman should hush. Now see, now, now the angel of punishment on, on him. He ain't talking all that junk now about how long you're supposed to be punished this and how long you're supposed to be punished that. Now he wants it all to stop all of a sudden, right? That's all he, he running him out too much. But look, verse 3. And he answered, It is necessary for thee to endure inconveniences and vexations. For so that good angel has commanded concerning thee, because he would try thee. Meaning you got to go through it. And here Hermesy is trying to get it to stop, and it doesn't stop immediately. Guys, even when you, re even after you realize what's going on, you realize that you've done error, you realize you're being punished for this, but that don't stop it. You know what I'm saying? You still, you, you watch what he said. Sir, said I, what so great offense have I committed that I should be delivered to this messenger? Harkin said he, thou art indeed guilty of many sins, yet not so many that thou shouldest be delivered to this messenger. Okay. So Hermes is like, man, what did I do? What did I do so bad what, that, that I got to go through this? And the angel's like, yeah, you did a whole lot of stuff. You did a whole lot of stuff, Hermes, but it ain't just you. You ain't the only one. This, you, it, it, because if you ain't the only reason that you have to go through this. Look at verse 5. But thy house has committed many sins and offenses, and therefore that good messenger 
being grieved at their doings, commanded that for some time thou shouldest suffer affliction, that they may both repent of what they have done and may wash themselves from all the lust of the present world. Yeah. So you're being punished for your family members, too, for your household members, too. You know what I'm saying? And some of the stuff that they're doing, too, that's getting you in, that's getting Hermes in trouble. You as the head of the house, some of the people that live in your house are getting you in trouble from the things that they're doing, too. And he, he tells Hermes, Hermes, you know, back there in similitude is because he neglected them. He didn't teach them anything that they're doing this stuff. And now he's now Hermes is getting punished for it. Look at verse six. When, therefore, they shall have repented and be purified, then that messenger which is appointed over Thy punishment shall depart from thee. Now, look at verse 6. You know what I'm saying? We need to, this is probably the biggest verse for here for me and for everybody because it says, When therefore they have repented. So your kids, your family, your wife, the members of your household, they have to they have to repent. They have to be purified. Then that messenger which is appointed over thy punishment shall depart from thy house. So, yeah, it's not just Hermes has got to learn, but the kids got to learn too. They, they got to get in line too. Look at verse 7. I said unto him, Sir, if they have behaved themselves so as to anger that good angel, yet what have I done? He answered, They cannot otherwise be afflicted unless thou, who are the head of the family, suffer. Yeah, so how are they going to suffer? If if you got food to eat, how are your kids going to suffer hunger? If if you have, you know, if your car is running good, how are they going to, you know, be without, you know, transportation? If your house is warm or whatever the punishment, if you sick or, or I mean, if you healthy, how are they going to be, how are they going to suffer? You know, so they have to... You, you have to be punished for them is what it's saying here. You, or it's saying something like they can't suffer the punishment unless you, the head of the house, suffer too. That's, that's kind of messed up. But, hey, the word is the word and we go with it. Verse 8. For whatsoever thou shalt suffer, thou must need feel it. But as long as thou shalt stand well established, they cannot experience, experience any vexation. Yeah, they can't experience any vexation. You come in, you gonna come to their rescue. You gonna come help them when they're hungry. You gonna come feed them when they hurt. You gonna come give them medicine. But when you're hurting, the whole house is gonna suffer. You know what I'm saying? That's what and that's what goes on here. So that's why Hermans has to has to pay too. Verse nine. I replied, but sir. Behold, they also now repent with all of their hearts. I know, says he, that they repent with all of their hearts. But thou, but dost thou therefore think that their offenses who repent are immediately blotted out? Yeah, so just because they start uh, uh, repenting, they realize they're in error. You think it's supposed to stop immediately? No, just like it didn't stop with you, it's not gonna stop with them. It still gotta, you still gotta go through a certain amount of time in the punishment period. But the thing is, you gotta get them repenting. You gotta get them on the right path. And how do you do so? You have to understand what Hermes is saying about the twelve, the twelve uh, virtues. There, you have to practice and apply those in your life, and then you have to teach your kids so they can stop being angry, so they can stop being liars or slanderers, or you know, and, and those kind of things. Um, verse ten. No, they are not presently, but he that repents must afflict his soul and show himself humble in all his affairs and undergo many and diverse vexations. I mean, you still got to be punished, even though you realize the error in your ways. That ain't going to stop the punishment. You know, people are like, I apologize. I'm sorry. That ain't so yeah, it's good. You're sorry. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, that means you might might not do it again, but you're still going to suffer the, the punishment from the ashes that you've done. So go on, get going out there and get the switch. And let's let's get it on. Verse 11. And when he shall have suffered all things that were appointed for him, then perhaps he that made him and formed all things besides will be moved with compassion towards him and afford him some remedy. And especially if he shall perceive his heart who repents to be free from every evil work. Which means once the Lord realizes, yeah, you are away from that thing, you ain't got to worry about that no more, then good things will start to happen. So this is why we have to move towards that stuff because we want these good things to happen. So we have to get in. We have to clean some of this stuff out of our life. Again, you know, my wife has done some classes on here in similar tools. I've done some classes, you know, out of commands. Get this stuff so we can learn what they're talking about. A lot of this stuff, you know, we're still doing it like being angry. 
or being selfish, you know, or being or not having long suffering or, you know, not doing charitable deeds and that stuff is if, if if any of that stuff lingers, it could be causing us to stay in the angel of, of punishment. So let's go back and let's let's look back at those Hermes classes and, and let's start to fix some of this stuff. Verse 12. But at present, it is expedient for thee and for thy house to be grieved. And it is needful that thou shouldest endure much vexations and the angel of the Lord as the angel of the Lord who committed thee unto me has commanded. Yeah, the angel of the Lord, he commanded this. Talking, is he talking about the Holy Spirit? I don't want to pigeonhole myself and try to say who it is. But, you know, it's, it's it, it, these things have to come on us, you know, and until we get the, the sin out of our life, you know, it's going to be there. We're going to be under these, the, under these torments, these vexations, as they call them. Verse 13, rather give thanks unto the Lord that knowing what was to come, he thought thee worthy to him. He should foretell that trouble was coming upon thee who art able to bear it. Yeah. So what he said here is be blessed. You know what I'm saying? You're still suffering the punishment, but at least you know why now. At least you know that it ain't, you know, just some random stuff going on. You know there's a reason behind it. You're being purified. You, you, you're you being cleansed of all of this, the, the sins that's in your life, and you're going to be a better person because of it in the end. And he's saying take, you know, take, take, take uh, pleasure in knowing that, knowing that this is why these vexations are on you in the first place. And then you can start to bear it with love. That's important, to bear it with love. If you don't, if you if you're bitter because of the punishments that are on you, you're going to sterilize your punishments. And then guess what happens? Either you're going to to to, to stay in the, and you, you're going to go on to death. You know, you're not going to be cleansed. You, you're going to die in your in your sin or, you know, or you're going to have to do it again. You're going to have to go through it again. And, you know, we read in the Third Testament that when you when you suffer these kind of afflictions and you don't bear the afflictions with love, not only do they come back on you, but they come back on you and take more intensified next time. It's going to be worse next time. Look at 14. I said unto him, sir, but be thou also with me and I shall easily undergo any trouble. I will, said he, be with thee. Be with thee, and I will entreat the messenger who is set over thy punishment, that he will moderate his afflictions toward thee. Okay, so now Hermes has come a long way. He's realized what he's done wrong. He realized he's under the punishment period. He's he's started to work with his household and, and starting to get them right and everything, you know. And so now he goes back to the to the angel of punishment or the angel of repentance and says, Hey, can you get the angel of punishment off of me? And the angel of punishment say, Yeah, well, I I'll, I'll have him the moderator. Maybe they won't be so bad, you know. Like I said, at one point nothing would work right for me. You know, some things work right for me now. I'm still in the punishment period. I could tell because I'm not in the blessing period, I'm not getting, you know, all of the, the things of my desire, but, you know, things do work right, I do start, you know, it, it's, it's moderate now, it's moderate now, I'll just put it like that, 15, and moreover, thou shalt suffer adversity, but for a little time, and then thou shalt again be restored to thy former state, only continue on in the humility of thy mind, yeah, so once the punishment period is over, even though it may be moderate from you know now on, it, 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 you you will be once it's over, you will be restored to your former state. You know what I'm saying? And you know, remember the scriptures say that you know the things that you lose for the sake of the Lord, you get back you know a hundredfold. So you start to get stuff back. Look at 16. Obey the Lord with a pure heart, thou and thy house and thy children, and walk in the commands which I have delivered unto thee. And then thy repentance may be firm and pure. So these, here is our instructions, guys. We have to be purified, right? We have to obey the Father. We have to do what he says. It was being disobedient that got us in trouble. We have to obey. Now, you say, well, we, we don't know about Hermes. Her, the thing about the shepherd of Hermes, at what point it was a part of our, of, of our Bible. Remember, our Bible has 66 books in it. 
But you ever heard of the Septuagint? The Septuagint, I believe, has 70 books in it. Well, where are the other 40 books? Here's, here's one of them right here. The Shepherd of Hermes was removed along with Enoch. They took books out of the Bible. You know, some people say they changed the Bible. They did this. Well, they just took books out. They took books like Hermes out. So you don't know that you are in error for being angry. You don't know you're in error for being selfish. You don't know you, you're in error for, for grieving the Holy Spirit. You don't know these things. But, you know, that's why we have Sep That's why we have Hermes academy so we're trying to get back on track y'all we're trying to find the the uh we try to repair the breach here all right look at 17 and if thou shalt keep these things with thy house thy inconveniences shall depart from thee okay so it's got to be you but it's not only you but it's your house you know and he mentions earlier up there 16 that your children too i have children all over the country you know i have you know i think my oldest child how old is they 26 and you know the oldest children are spread from las vegas to philadelphia to maryland to alabama they're they're all over the place you know but you know is this saying that they gotta they gotta do this too i hope not because you know them chaps still kind of hard-headed out there you know but you know anyway we'll pray for them and you know and hopefully they get right and 18 and all vexations shall in like manner depart from thee whosoever shall walk according to these commands all right, guys, I know it was kind of long, but we got it there. And, you know, go back and read The Shepherd of Hermes. Like I said, there's an audio book that you can listen to. It's a different translation. My wife doesn't like it because, it's, you know, it's kind of it's a little bit corrupt. But, you know, we, we did, we, we're used to corruption now in our scripture. You, you have to have what they call discernment so you can hear the father's voice in anything. So but it's, it's, you can just listen to it for entertainment purposes and then come back and find this one right here with The Shepherd of Hermes, uh, like I said, if you put in Shepherd of Hermes translated by William Wake, you can find this exact translation. And there are some other translations like Lightfoot. There's some other, just search around. Um, so there you have it, guys. If you wonder why some of the bad stuff is happening to you, or some of the people that you know, you know, whatever, going through some stuff, and you know, this is why, guys, it's the angel of punishment. You know, we had to, we have to get right. And, you know, we have a lot of help from the angel of punishment. All right, so hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment. Pray for us. Hermes Academy.